Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? Hey pals, so I decided to post this section separately to the rest of my like manga reading marathon because I feel like there's like a, a longer, more complex thought process and feelings about this general concept versus, you know, just how each of these different manga series makes me feel as I read them or like bits of the plot I enjoy or don't enjoy, you know. Like this is more of like a systematic um, feeling as a non-binary person, as an androgynous slash mask presenting person. So I fumble my way through. <laughs> so bear with. Um, I'm not trying to say anything offensive. I'm just trying to find the words for the feeling I am having as I was reading this manga. Um, it's like it actually is at the point where I'm not sure if I'm actually going to continue reading the manga because I just felt so um, bad. just felt so bad about myself um, because these are just sort of things I have noticed and I've been going through basically since I cut my hair short <laughs> and that was five five, six years ago. So, you know, I, in some ways um, I hope it opens your eyes as, I don't know, cis people, other people who just ha don't understand this as an experience, um, or that you feel seen and validated if you also feel this way. And I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> This series is bringing up a lot of feelings that I wasn't expecting to be brought up. I feel like I need to talk about this now or I forget. Neurodivergent brain. So like I first read this long before I knew I was non-binary. I always had this affinity with Haruhi. And like I read this series when I knew I was bi, so like, you know, I saw myself as Haruhi and Haruhi has like many suitors in this series but like particularly Tamaki and Hikaru, Hikaru and like I always was always rooting for Haruhi to get with one of those two people but I never really got to that part but like as I'm reading this series um the host club are obsessed with getting Haruhi to dress like a girl, dress in femme clothes. Um, like Haruhi doesn't really care about clothes or gender pre presentation and things like that. They just kind of accidentally fell into dressing mask like a man or whatever, and they feel comfortable that way. You know, they don't. They just they don't care. They seem more comfortable in mask clothes mostly because they're more practical and such forth which you know big mood vibes um and it's just like it's very clear tamaki is like madly in love with haruhi but all of his like daydreams about them finally having special moments together or such forth is always when haruhi is wearing femme clothes and also like the writer often makes these like really important vulnerable moments as well with Haruhi in femme clothes. And like as a non-binary person who addresses androgynously to mask, this series is not as validating as it used to feel. Because now it's just really obvious about how binary things are. And like, something that I experience myself is like really, I, I have not dated this man in 
five to seven years because I look like a man or like, you know, I look like a butch lesbian, that kind of vibe. And I, I never want to wear femme clothes again. I never want to present femme. Like, that's where I'm at. I don't ever want to present femme or not like typically femme. Like, maybe some mixtures of things, but, like, not straight up traditional femme. And this book just keeps bringing up this idea that cis men struggle to accept and allow themselves, I guess, to be attracted to people like me. Like, I know it's not everybody, because I do know a bunch of people who you know, kind of look like me, maybe they're non-binary, whatever, and they're dating cis men who have absolutely no issue with it, but it just really seems like the majority, <laughs> it'd be like that. I'm finding it really difficult to verbalise because it's something I've, it's just kind of like a weird lurking feeling as well I'm like I haven't reached that bit yet but I'm pretty sure the host club kind of figures out Hikaru has a crush on Haruhi and they kind of force them to spend some alone time together I think Haruhi is wearing a dress again in that point and they're always trying to make her wear like femme bikinis and femme costumes and shit like that even though like a massive part of this plot is that they can't let anybody else know Haruhi is not a man because she has to work off a debt by working for the host club. Um, and I don't know, it's just making me kind of sad. Like, I know further down the line as well, there is like a, a different, like a female version of the host club, I guess, or maybe it's like a theatre club, but it's run by women who dress androgynously or in mask clothes. I just wanted to jump in in this section because I did carry on reading this particular book um, and literally like a couple of pages later is when this other kind of female-led host club pops up. Basically it's uh, they are from an all-girls school um, and like the leader of their drama club thing is an androgynous woman like she's very tall she has like a short haircut she's kind of just like a a fab to in ways um and she's she was mistaken as a man and they basically try to get Haruhi to join their school and their host club instead but the rest of the club that you see are all femme women with long hair and they romance and seduce other women. <sighs> I don't know. I just... I'm just finding it really difficult to read because I'm now non-binary reading this. The last time I read this, I identified as a cis woman. And, like, now I understand why I identified with Harry so much, but now... The plot line is even more damaging to me. Like, I just don't, I just don't understand. Like, they're clearly attracted to Haruhi as she is. What is the obsession with her having long hair and dressing in femme clothes? Like, I just don't understand why the attraction seems to be conditional. Like, maybe it's because I'm I'm bi and non-binary that I just kind of don't get it. But it just, it, it now feels a lot more personal. It's like more of an insult to me now. Because it's also just what I deal with. If I do try to date people, because it's like, I don't... Like, I just forgot how much of this plot revolves around this group of boys trying to make uh, a gender non-conforming person be more gender 
conforming, you know, it just doesn't sit comfortably with me. Like, I know it's a completely different time, but, like, it's just interesting the different feelings it's bringing up for me now as an out non binary person versus when I was a teenager and had no idea this is what I <laughs> this is this is me because back then it was like oh my god I love this I love this idea of you know someone who kind of looks like a boy but isn't a boy and boys loving them because like that was my first introduction to generally gender non-conforming characters but especially like women who were gender non-conforming who were still attractive to men to straight men to add to that as well like some of my absolute favorite pieces of media from when i was younger are all this kind of concept of gender non-conforming leading women so like mulan absolutely beats all of the disney princesses um and like that's like a massive thing online of like oh shang's bi obviously because he's obviously madly in love with mulan as ling ping <coughs> wow it's been a while i haven't watched it in ages but then he's also still in love with her as a woman but then she's even before she was dressing as a man she wasn't a gender conforming woman like she was not very good at being what everyone wanted to, her to be like you know the whole matchmaking nightmare she's the man amanda Bynes plays a like a soft mask football player who then dresses as a man like pretends to be her brother for the majority of the plot her roommate whose name I can't fucking remember, but Channing Tatum, is obviously kind of falling in love with her as a man, but then is in love with her as she becomes a woman again. I also wanted to give, like, a solid mention to Spinelli from Recess. Like, I absolutely didn't realise it when I was younger. I always kind of identified with Gretchen. <laughs> but I was also kind of low-key madly in love with um, and identified with Spinelli in a lot of ways. Recess was my bi awakening, I swear to God, because I was also mad enough with TJ. <laughs> but like, you know, like the, these pieces of media kind of give you the idea that, including on High School Host Club, the idea that cis men can and will fall in love with gender non-conforming women, wim same, women, as long as they are actually women, and end up kind of still conforming in some way so like even though they kind of gave me low-key hope and like some kind of like a mixture of a gender and sexual awakening of like wow what's this it also like entirely inv invalidates me as well <laughs> it's very difficult to put into words <laughs> and i need help <laughs> as a more educated adult i now see you know yeah there is that point of this is a gender non-conforming woman main character. Yes, the men around her find her attractive. Some of them have romantic uh, or sexual attraction towards her as well, like specifically. But now I see that they are also tr just trying to change her. And it just is so uncomfortable to read. Like, I feel very lucky that no one ever forced me or tried to force me to dress a certain way or present a certain way. My family have always been like, you know, do what the fuck you want kind of thing. I've been dyeing my hair since I was 13. I cut my hair off five, six years ago or something. My, I grew up with, you know, the two main women in my family who had short hair 90% of my life. You know, my family are not particularly, typically gender conforming. Um, so I feel very lucky for that upbringing, but also like just reading this reminds me of society, society's view of me and how society treated me, whether it was friends, people at school, people in jobs, people in, you know, whatever, higher roles or what the fuck ever, you know, teachers, blah, 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 like people trying to control how I look and dress 
and like feeling that outside pressure in a lot of relationships I did have yeah I don't know I just it feels like everything I go back to read from my teenage years I actually see how damaging it was to me as well like this taught me that yeah people might find you attractive but to really want to be with you you have to look a certain way to make people really love you and it's like wow cool what a great message to receive as a teenager with self-confidence issues like i'm not sure if anything i've actually said has been particularly coherent <laughs> I felt like I just needed to get my phone out to record because I just feel so uncomfortable <laughs> and I'm also just really sad because I loved the series a lot and I loved these characters a lot um you know it's one of the few things I read or watched where technically it's uh I have a heterosexual OTP or whatever uh, pardon me because for the most part, I don't have cishet OTPs, you know? They're at least gay. <sighs> yeah, I just feel sad because my non-binary icon from my teenage years was a way of telling me other people's love and attraction is conditional and should be conditional and that, you know, no one would love me for who I am and who I want to be, I would have to conform to what they wanted, which I did. This is what I did for years. BPD as fuck. Like all I did was conform to other people's versions of me that they wanted or I thought they wanted. And I was super unwell. I think it's I think it's worse because the representation has still not gotten better. I still don't see myself in media in pretty much any form. I, like, I, I don't know. I could not give you a single character that I feel like I felt represented by in TV or film. Like the closest I've gotten, I would say I've been in like three books maybe four but like also maybe not like even if we break i felt very seen by finn's character even though i'm not um binary trans he is a mask presenting trans person with a disability where the fuck is that representation that's like basically nowhere they also had a non-binary character called ever who i like kind of related to but not like a lot i definitely felt a lot more seen by Finn. I also felt more seen by Maddie, who is autistic by, um, she has a shaved head, even though I don't have a shaved head, but like the fact that she's, you know, not specifically gender conforming in the book. And she also has like a physical injury that's become like a chronic condition. I felt very seen by these two characters. Um, before that, there were two books about bi women who I felt very seen by. One of them is not otherwise specified. The main character is called Etta. She's a black bisexual ballerina with an eating disorder. So like, uh, and then the book, she goes into musical theatre and that's like very much what I <laughs> grew up doing was theatre and musical theatre stuff. Uh, I was bi and I dealt with disordered eating really badly in my teenage years she has a single mom you know like there were lots of similar things in that from like my teenage years Leah on the offbeat fat by single mom her attitude in the book was very me except she's a lot more like self-accept of accepting of her like size and weight whereas I just was not as a teenager um and then besides those two I mean, I kind of saw myself in Julian in um, Cemetery Boys. 
and I feel like that was one of the first times I read a very specifically neurodivergent character. Like I read that before, even if it break. I don't know, just the way he moved about the world just resonated with me. The way he spoke about things and he was, he, you know, he's pretty blunt and direct and I don't know. I'm gonna have to reread it to be honest because I can't quite remember everything and since reading that I've also been questioning my neurodivergence and what specifically is going on with me. So if I feel like if I read it again I would see more and identify more. But like, you know, none of those encompass the entire entirety of my existence. You know, like I don't expect there to be a bi or queer, non-binary, mid to plus size, physically disabled, mentally ill, <laughs> neurodivergent, fucking British queer who looks like me and had the same shit at school and whatever. Like I don't expect all of that to come from someone else. But I just I just don't see myself anywhere. Especially in TV. Like where the fuck am I? I'm not there. And a lot of like the non binary character like non binary non binary characters or actors they tend to be in sci-fi, which isn't like a huge genre I enjoy. Like, yeah, occasionally there's something I'll like, but like, generally, no. I also just want to say, is it not like a little bit weird that the trans and non-binary characters seem to mainly be in fantasy and sci-fi? Is that not like a tiny bit problematic? Like, it makes sense, because, you know, fancy and sci-fi, you can make up whatever rules you like. You know, I'm just, I just think there's something there that needs to be thought about and discussed, you know? So I don't even really get to see them very often, or they're just, their one trait is being non-binary, and the rest of their existence is skinny, white, able-bodied, you know? I can't relate to them in any other way. Yeah, I don't know. Then I might, I might find more of a point to say a bit later. But I'll just stop. I'll just stop here. Um. So yeah, that's the video. Kind of rambly and just exploring some thoughts and feelings about um, <laughs> non-binary presentation, uh, gender non-conforming presentation in media generally, but all of it being triggered by Oran High School Host Club and Haruhi. Um, I hope that made some sense to people um, and that you can understand what I'm trying to discuss. <laughs> Sorry, I just sort of caught my tiny ponytail in the in my peripheral vision. I think it's something that I'm going to continue like thinking about, maybe exploring and possibly come back to this and do maybe a more coherent, structured video but I wanted to sort of put this out now anyway for one I don't have another video this week I've had so much going on and also my hair is genuinely horrendous like at the moment this is about how I can deal with it but you know if other people who watch this have any other media examples of what I'm talking about that would be amazing if you left them in the comments um because like my main three are literally Haruhi in Royal High School Host Club, Amanda Bynes in She's the Man, Mulan. But I know there's definitely loads and loads more kind of like that, where generally the woman main characters or woman characters that are, you know, one of the main set of the cast tends to be non-conforming as in like they, they cannot be what everyone wants them to be. But I feel like there was definitely a plot line somewhere where, because she's an Ashley, where the other Ashleys find out she's an Ashley and, like, bring her in and make her, like, those Ashleys. I'm pretty sure that is a plot line um, that I need to look into. But I think that might be the only one that maybe doesn't lie on... You've got to be femme to be loved, because, I mean, I'm pretty sure TJ was in love with her. 
Did any of that make sense? I don't fucking think so. Um, hello, I am neurodivergent and I need a diagnosis ASAP. Thank you very much. Go to my coffee or Kofi or whatever the fuck it is because I have no money. I'm very poor and I need, uh, I need a diagnosis. I'm losing the plot a little bit because I'm now so deeply aware that I'm neurodivergent besides being dyslexic. But I don't know what to do about it, you know? Anyway, like this video, please. Subscribe to my channel for more media literary discussions about gay and trans stuff. Um, I, and like also chronic illness and disabled shit too. I feel like the weebs are going to come for me like they did with Fruits Basket. So maybe this video will get some views. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think next week I'll have a proper video, I promise. But it is what it is. And I just had to get this all out and discuss it, you know. Uh, I'll see you in next week. Bye.